In this section, we're going to start talking about hypertension and the miscellaneous antihypertensive medications. The drugs most commonly used for hypertension are diuretics, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, ACE inhibitors, and angiotensin II receptor blockers, the ARBSs. Blood pressure must be kept at a level that is adequate to maintain tissue perfusion as the blood moves into the capillaries. Peripheral resistance, heart rate, and stroke volume interact to, de to determine the mean arterial pressure and capillary flow. Peripheral resistance is determined by the diameter of the arterioles, constriction of the arterioles um, will ri raise the blood pressure. Other factors that influence blood pressure include changes in body position, muscular activity, which causes local warmth and thus dilating the vessels, and circulating blood volume. Baroreceptors respond to local changes in blood pressure by constricting or relaxing smooth muscle to change blood flow. Many hormones also cause contraction or relaxation of arterial smooth muscles to bring blood flow to a specific organ. The renin-angiotensin system is also an important regulatory feedback loop component of the system. A drop in blood pressure to the renal arteries stimulates the secretion of renin. Renin activates the renin-angiotensin system by cleaving angiotensin ogen produced in the liver to yield angiotensin 1, which is further converted into angiotensin 2 by ACE the angiotensin converting enzyme. Angiotensin II then constricts blood vessels, increases the secretion of antidiuretic hormone ADH and aldosterone, and causes reabsorption of sodium in the kidneys, thus leading to water retention, increased blood volume, and increased blood pressure. So blood pressure is, can be affected by peripheral resistance, heart rate, stroke volume, changes in body position, muscular activity, circulating blood, baroreceptors, hormones, and the renin-angiotensin system. The cause of primary hypertension, which accounts for approximately 95% of all cases of hypertension, remains unknown. All these Although these are not completely understood, many factors have been linked to primary hypertension, including some that are genetically determined. Involved mechanisms include elevated peripheral resistance, alteration in cell membranes related to elevated lipids, endothelial dysfunction, changes in sodium or calcium levels, and hyperinsulin. Sympathetic nervous system hyperactivity causes by insensitivity of the baroreflexes reflexes may contribute to hypertension accompanied by tachycardia and elevated cardiac output in younger patients. Dysregulation of the renin-angiotensin system leads to hypertension, although this does not appear to be a major factor in the or origin of hypertension. African Americans with hypertension and older adult patients tend to have lower plasma renin activity. Approximately 10% of hypertensive individuals have high levels, 60% uh, have normal, and 30% have low renin levels. Some patients have decreased, uh, decreased ability to excrete sodium, which leads to increased blood volume and increased blood pressure. Sodium restriction may be necessary, necessary in these individuals. Abnorm abnormalities in sodium transport mechanisms lead to an increased level of intracellular sodium in the blood cells. This may result in the increased vascular sm smooth muscle tone characteristics that is often seen in hypertension. Environmental life styles and dietary factors also play an important and, modifi and modifiable role in hypertension. Obesity leads to increased intravascular volume and increased cardiac output. Alcohol increases blood pressure by increasing plasma catecholamines, and cigarette smoking raises blood pressure by increasing plasma norepinephrine. Medications also can have an effect um, and cause hypertension. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory 
medications cause fluid retention, which can lead to hypertension. Excessive intake of salt, uh, sodium, or low levels of potassium can also contribute to hypertension by increasing blood volumes. Physical activity is a, a recently recognized uh, risk factor. And finally, um, metabolic syndrome has recently been identified as a major cardiac risk factor. The, the symptoms, is, this is also referred to as syndrome X. Uh, the insulin re resistance syndrome or the obesity dyslipidemia syndrome. A patient who has an ab abdominal obesity, hypertension, insulin resistance, and a lipid disorder has a greatly in elevated risk of cardiovascular disease. Instead of serving as, a sep as separate risk factors, they work together to increase the risk. There's also uh, secondary hypertension. Um, although primary hypertension is very common, it is essential for the clinician to rule out secondary causes of hypertension. Certain laboratory findings are suggestive of secondary causes, and secondary causes should be suspected if the patient's hypertension does not respond to therapy, the hypertension is of sudden onset, especially before the age of 20 or after the age of 50, a patient with well-controlled hypertension d demonstrates a sudden increase in blood pressure or stage 3 hypertension develops. Again, there are many causes of secondary hypertension and this uh, would require further investigation. Hypertension is a powerful risk factor for cardiac disease. The higher the blood pressure, the greater is the risk for ischemic heart disease, heart attacks, heart failure, stroke, and kidney disease. In adults, each increase in 20 millimeters of mercury in systolic blood pressure or 10 millimeters of mercury in diastolic blood pressure doubles a patient's cardiovascular risk um, for disease. This knowledge has led to an emphasis on the lower spectrum of blood pressures. So for the medications um, used in hypertension, what um, are the indications? Um, there are alpha-1 receptors. These are indicated for or unlabeled use for the signs and symptoms of benign prosthetic hyperplasia or BPH. Um, these hypertensive agents can be used not only to lower the blood pressure, but also in patients um, with BPH. Prazosin has been used for post-traumatic stress disorder and Raynaud's phenomenon. Clonidine is another medication that's used for hypertension. However, it has many unlabeled uses as well, including alcohol and opiate withdrawal, smoking cessation and atrial fibrillation, as well as attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It's also been used in menopausal flushing and constitutional growth delay in children, as well as diabetic diarrhea, restless leg syndrome, ulcerative colitis, and the diagnosis of pheochromocytoma. Methadopa is another um, antihypertensive medication. Um, and it is unlabeled, its unlabeled use is for hypertension in pregnancy. Hydrolyzine um, is also used to um, control high blood pressure. Um, however, it's also been found to be useful in treating congestive heart failure as well as pulmonary hypertension. And minoxidil, um, this is uh, antihypertensive medication which is also found to be effective against um, bald, baldness in um, people. It's a topical treatment for baldness. So let's take a look at the alpha-1 um, adre adrenergic blockers, adrenergenic blockers, sorry. Um, the alpha-1 receptor blockers act at, by blocking postsympathetic alpha-1 adrenergic receptors. Some agents are more selective as blockers than others. This causes dilatation of the arterioles and veins and reduces peripheral res vascular resistance, as well as supine and standing blood pressure. 
these drugs tend to affect the diastolic more than the systolic blood pressure. They also relax smooth muscles in the bladder, neck, and prostate, reducing bladder outlet obstruction without affecting bladder contractility. Centrally acting alpha-2 agonists uh, agents such as clonidine and methyl dopa act through stimulation of central inhibitory alpha adrenergic receptors. They inhibit sympathetic cardioaccelerator and vasoconstrictor centers. Stimulation of alpha adrenergic receptors in the brain stem results in reduced sympathetic outflow from the central nervous system, which causes a decrease in peripheral resistance, vascular resistance in the renal system heart rate and blood pressure. Renal blood flow and glomular filtration rate remain es essentially unchanged. The direct um, vasodilators also are effective against in treating hypertension. Um, these direct vasodilators relax arterial smooth muscle and decrease peripheral vascular resistance. This stimulates the carotid sinus baroreceptors, producing reflex increases in heart rate, renin release, and consequently sodium and water retention. Hydrolyzine and minoxidil uh, both decrease arterial blood pressure by reducing peripheral vascular resistance. Reflex sympathetic action results in increased heart rate and cardiac output. Neither agent promotes orthostatic hypotension because of the per preferential dilatation of arterioles as compared with the veins. However, reflex renin release leads to production of angiotensin II, which promotes aldosterone release and sodium reabsorption. Hydrolyzine increases heart rate and sympathetic discharge, so it is frequently used in combination with beta blockers, clonidine, and methyl dopa. Minoxidil triggers cardiac and renal homeostatic mechanisms, therefore beta blockers and diuretics are included as part of the treatment regimen. Renin inhibitors act to block, act to block the action of renin at the top of the renin-angiotensin system cascade. Thus, it is characterized as providing triple blockage of the renin-angiotensin system. Act by targeting uh, the renin angiotensin system at the first and rate limiting step. Although this increases renin production, the renin produced is inhibited and its capacity to form angiotensin 1, as measured by assessment of plasma renin activity, is reduced. By contrast, ACE inhibitors, ARBs, and thiazide diuretics all increase plasma renin concentration thereby producing angiotensin 1, which is then available for conversion to angiotensin 2. In addition, renin inhibitors do not affect kinine metabolism and hence would not be expected to cause dry cough or angioneurotic edema, both of which are characteristic side effects of the ACE inhibitors. So how do we decide on um, which treatment um, for a patient do we use for um, hypertension? There are so many drugs out there. Well, there are standardized guidelines. Uh, the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, um, ha they developed a fourth report on the diagnosis, evaluation, and treatment of high blood pressure in children and adolescents. And the JNC-8 has specific standardized guidelines. This um, is the GNC-8 guidelines, um, and this is what should be used to determine which drug you want to start a patient on. Um, as you can see on this chart, um, it starts with looking at adult age greater than 18 with hypertension, um, and the first line of therapy is to start lifestyle interventions. Um, and this should be continued throughout the management of uh, hypertension. The next step is to set blood pressure goals and initiate blood pressure lowering medications based on age, diabetes, and chronic kidney disease. For those 
patients in the general population who do not have diabetes, um, who are greater than the age of 60, the goal of blood pressure should be 150 over 90. For those less than age 60, the goal sh should be 140 over 90. Those patients with diabetes or chronic kidney disease, um, all ages with diabetes present and no uh, chronic kidney disease, the blood pressure should be 140 over 90. And all ages um, of patients with chronic kidney disease should have a blood pressure of um, less than 140 over 90. There's also um, race plays a role in um, treatment of blood pressure. For patients that um, are black, the first line of treatment is to initiate thiazide type diuretics or calcium channel blockers alone or in combination, whereas non-black patients um, initiate thiazide type di diuretics or ACE inhibitors or ARBs or calcium channel blockers alone or in combination. For those patients with diabetes or chronic kidney disease, all patients should be initiated on um, ACE inhibitors or ARBs alone or in co uh, combination with other drug classes. Um, once the medication is started, uh, you need to select a drug treatment titration strategy um, to maximize the first medication um, before adding a second one or adding a second medication before reaching maximum dose of the first medication or start with two medication classes separately or as a fixed dose combination. From here, you, you determine whether you're having good, um, you're at gold for the blood pressure or not um, and move on um, following this JNC chart. Again, it starts with lifestyle modifications, then drug treatment, um, make the initial drug choice based on stage and compelling indications. You must titrate the dose if the clinical goal is not achieved after maximum dose or intolerance of side effects. Then you must substitute another drug from a different class or a second agent, usually a diuretic. The JNC places emphasis on the use of diuretics as the first choice of drug ter therapy for uncomplicated hypertension. If there is chronic kidney disease, you should initiate an ACE inhibitor or uh, ARB in most of these patients. Um, Evidence-based recommendations in clinical trials, antihypertensive therapy has been associated with 35 to 40 percent mean reduction in the incidence of stroke, 20 to 25 percent reduction in MIs, and 50 percent in heart failure. It is estimated that control of hypertension at or below 140 over 90 could, in men and women, prevent 19 to 31 percent of coronary heart disease events respectively, whereas optimal control of, to below 130 over 80 could prevent 37 to 50% of coronary heart disease events. All antihypertensive agents equally reduce total mortality, cardiovascular mortality, and MI. Beta blockers were less effective than other antihypertensive agents in reducing rates of stroke and combined cardiovascular events. Calcium channel blockers and beta blockers were less effective in reducing heart failure. Hypertension during pregnancy is um, mostly treated with methyl dopa and labetalol. Um, long acting nifedipine has been found to be also acceptable in um, pregnant women. Um, so, again, here is the JNC 8 recommendations, guidelines um, for target systolic and diastolic pressure related to chronic kidney disease, diabetes, and age. So commonly used drugs include the diuretics, the beta blockers, the ACE inhibitors, the calcium channel, block, channel blockers, and the angiotensin receptor blockers, or the ARBs. The most commonly used diuretic is hydrochlorothiazide. Loop diuretics are used in patients who have, who have renal insufficiency. Potassium sparing diuretics such as trimetrine are used in combination, usually with hydrochlorothiazide. If the patient has low levels of potassium, they should be administered with caution. Aldosterone antagonists such as spirolactone, also a potassium sparing diuretic. Um, are often used in patients with CHF 
and after MI, but the potassium level needs to be monitored closely. Beta blockers um, are effective and have been well demonstrated cardioprotective effects after an MI. However, these effects have not been validated for treatment of hypertension. The cardioselective beta blockers have a great greater effect on the beta-1 cardiac receptors than on the beta-2 receptors in the bronchi and blood vessels. However, they become less selective as the dosage is increased. Previous JNC recommendations called for the use of beta blockers as first-line therapy. Many continue to consider them as good first-line treatment for younger patients. Beta blockers, however, are not recommended for elderly patients unless the patient has a compelling indication for a beta blocker. Beta blockers with intrinsic sympathomimetic activity may also be useful for patients who develop symptomatic bradycardia or postural hypotension when taking beta blockers. Cardioselective beta blockers with ISA are preferred for patients with angina or a history of MIs. ACE inhibitors are very effective and safe for the treatment of patients with hypertension. They are cardioprotective. They are useful in preserving renal function, but must be used in caution with, in patients with pre-existing renal failure because of the risk of hyperkalemia. The first um, ACE inhibitor, Captopril, was associated with a dry cough. However, newer ACE inhibitors have a low incidence of cough. Um, they should be used in caution in women of childbearing age because of the potential for damage to the fetus. Angiotensin. Um, Blockers are also effective as ACE inhibitors, um, but they do not cause the cough. Calcium channel blockers do not have that cardioprotective characteristics as ACE inhibitors and ARBs, as well as beta blockers. Short-acting calcium channel blockers should not be used in the treatment of patients with hypertension. Verapamil, cardizem, can affect arterioventicular conduction and should, should be used with caution in patients on beta blockers. Verapamil and diltelazem have numerous drug interactions. And finally, cost can be an important issue in drug choice. Certain antihypertensive agents are available in generic form and can be much less expensive than drugs that are available only under the trade name. The drugs lists in um, each of the chapters identify um, generic equivalents, um, which you should be familiar with, and practitioners should have a good idea of the relative costs of medications that they prescribe. So what about um, patient variables? For um, geriatric patients, older adults are more likely than younger patients to have systolic hypertension and more likely to experience adverse reactions such as orthostatic hypotension, um, which often results in falls as well as fractures. Alpha-1 adrenergic blockers um, use is limited because of the side effects of syncope and tachycardia in elderly patients and centrally acting alpha-2 anti-adrenergics. Um, you must be vigilant in monitoring for orthostatic hypotension, um, which again is often uh, related to falls in the elderly. You also need to be um, cautious in patients, um, especially elderly patients in renal failure. Clonidine may cause cognitive dysfunction and sedation, um, which also may increase the risk of falls. Direct um, vasodilators um, in elderly may um, precipitate angina in patients with coronary artery disease, may cause or aggravate pericardial and pleural effusions, and may increase cerebral and renal blood flow, which may affect dosing. So how do we monitor these medications? Um, alpha-1 receptors. You need to monitor the blood pressure on a regular basis. Centrally acting alpha-2 antienergic medications such as methyldopa. You need to monitor blood pressure on a regular basis. You need to obtain a baseline and periodic CBC. 
um, monitor liver function over the first 12 weeks of therapy and perform periodic liver function tests, especially during the first 6 to 12 weeks of therapy or when unexplained fever occurs. You need to consider direct Coombs tests at baseline in 6 to 12 months and renal function should be monitored because dosing guidelines are changed by renal impairment. Direct vasodilators, um, again, you need to monitor the blood pressure on a regular basis, obtain um, baseline EKG, EKGs, monitor for blood dyscrasias, monitor renal function studies, weight gain and signs of edema, obtain baseline anti-nuclear antibodies before hydralazine therapy is initiated because of lupus type syndrome symptoms can occur and measure serum creatinine and BUN periodically. Alpha-1 adrenergic blockers, you need to use, uh, limit use because of the side effects of syncope and tachycardia in the elderly. Um, again, centrally acting alpha-2 anti-adrenergics, you need to um, monitor for the orthostatic hypotension. Um, use caution with renal failure and clonidine may cause cognitive dysfunction and sedation. And finally, the direct vasodilators may precipitate angina in patients with coronary disease, um, may aggravate pericardial and pleural effusions. You need to monitor for this and increase cerebral and renal blood flow. None of these drugs are indicated in pediatric patients. Hypertension in children is defined as blood pressure above the 95th percentile for age, gender, and height. Indications for treatment include symptomatic hypertension, secondary hypertension, hypertensive target organ damage, diabetes types 1 and 2, persistent hypertension despite non-pharmacologic measures, and compelling reasons. Um, there are guidelines um, by the National Heart and Lung and Blood Institute's um, fourth report on specific recommendations for children. Accept acceptable classes for use in children um, include ACE inhibitors, ARBs, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and diuretics. Um, gender also has to be considered when you're um, prescribing antihypertensive medications. Again, the alpha-1 receptor blockers tend to be used in older men because of their positive effects on BPH and minoxidil um, used with caution in women um, because of um, hair growth. Um, in pregnancy and lactation, the GNC-8 um, states that antihypertensive therapy should be started in this pregnant woman if the systolic blood pressure is greater than 160 millimeters of mercury or the diastolic blood pressure is greater than 100 to 105 millimeters of mercury. The goal of pharmacological treatment should be a diastolic less than 100 to 105 and a systolic blood pressure less than 160. GNC Eight recommends methyl dopa for women with hypertension in um, first diagnosed during pregnancy. The American Academy of Pediatrics consider most, considers most beta blockers um, and ch calcium channel blockers to be compatible with breastfeeding. Labetalol and propanolol are preferred because these drugs are not concentrated in breast milk compared to other beta blockers. Methyl dopa is classified as a category B in pregnancy. A study um, in BMJ found that the risk of having babies with birth abnormalities, particularly neural tube defects and heart malformations, were higher among women with high blood pressure during pregnancy, regardless of the type or use of treatment. Race also um, comes into consideration when you're prescribing uh, antihypertensive medication. The incidence of hypertension in whites is about 10 to 15 percent, whereas in blacks it's 20 to 30 percent. African Americans also have a higher blood pressure, which is more difficult to treat. The JNC-8 recommends initiating treatment 
um, with a thiazide type diuretic or calcium channel blocker in black patients with hypertension. In addition, regardless of rates or diabetes status in patients 18 years or older with chronic kidney disease, initial or add-on therapy should consist of an angiotensin converting enzyme or an angiotensin II receptor blocker, but not both. In other words, do not use both an ACE inhibitor and an angiotensin II receptor blocker in the same patient. African Americans tend to respond better than whites to diuretic monotherapy. ACE inhibitors, ARBs, and beta blockers are less effective than the other agents unless used with a diuretic. African Americans are more likely than whites to develop angioedema with ACE inhibitors, and calcium channel blockers and ARBs are preferred for the use in African Americans. So what do we need to tell our patients um, about uh, their antihypertensive medications? For all antihypertensives, um, you need to explain that the patient should not discontinue taking the medication unless directed so by their health care provider due to uh, rebound hypertension, which can occur. They are to avoid taking cough, cold, or allergy medications that um, contain simple mimetics that may cause blood pressure elevations. They also um, may cause orthostatic hypotension. So if dizziness occurs, um, especially in the elderly, avoid sudden changes in position. Use caution when rising from a sitting or lying position. Um, and a hot bath or shower may aggravate this dizziness. Dehydration may also increase the risk of orthostatic hypotension. The alpha one receptor blockers, you need to warn um, the patient of potentials for syncope. Make sure that the patient takes the first few doses when supine because of the possibility of first dose syncope. They should avoid driving and other hazardous tasks especially at the initiation of the therapy until um, they become um, comfortable with the side effects. You also need to warn men of the possibility of priapism. For the centrally acting alpha-2 anti Adrenergics, uh, drowsiness is a common adverse reaction, um, so you should suggest that they take the medication at bedtime. They should use caution when operating machinery or driving. Um, they should not use with alcohol or other CNS depressants. Tolerance to these products may be decreased, and they can use hard candy or frequent mouth care is necessary to relieve the symptoms of dry mouth. For the direct vasodilators, um, you need to explain to the patient that the urine exposed to the ear may darken um, and that they should take um, hydrolyzine, especially with males. They should notify a provider if unexplained prolonged fatigue or fever, muscle or joint aches or chest pain is experienced. 